It's Wednesday, January the 29th. Uh, lake level is about 9, 14 and a half, and water temperature you know, is anywhere from oh, 36 degrees to the warmest I found is about uh, 42 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a little deal on the Lowrance Electronics. I just got my new boat. Everything I've got has got touch screens. So I'm just going to show you some basic setups that I do to the graphs uh, to get them ready. Now, you know, before I get into that, as far as the fishing, you know, the fishing's been pretty tough. I actually went out Sunday and got a few more bites than I had been getting. But it's just, you know, with the water temperature like it is, it's, it's kind of a grind. Uh, I was able to catch a few fish on a jig and spoon deep. And I caught several fish in the first hour or so in the morning on an Alabama rig. Uh, most of them were short fish. The keeper fish, I did catch a keeper fish later in the day on an A-rig. But I caught a few on a jig and spoon. But it seems like no matter what you're doing, you just got to do it really slow. The shad are starting to die off. Uh, several different places I've seen them three quarter inch to one inch shad all over the lake kind of spinning off. Now, you know, that's a good time to be throwing that uh, float and fly when them shad start to spin off like that. Now, when they get to doing it, to where it actually starts blackening out your screen, it can be kind of tough fishing regardless whether you're doing a float and fly or jerk bait or an Alabama rig. But uh, so much of the fishing, let's get into the graphs a little bit. Now, usually one of the first things I do when I get to get my new bow is set my graphs up. And these new touch screens, the menus are real similar to the same as they are like on the HDS8s and the HDS10s. But I'm going to hit my uh, pages up here. My sidebar will come up and I'm going to go to settings. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do is go to sonar. And over here where it says installation, I'm going to hit that. And what that's going to do, I'm going to come down here to transducer type. So you're going to hit that. Then you're going to have a list of transducers that you've uh, got different options to choose. You can just scroll down till you get to the one you've got. If you've got a, uh, like on your front graph, if you've got a built-in transducer on your trolling motor, that'll be a, a generic 83 to 200. Now the one I've got is, uh, I'll actually have to close out of this. The one I've got is a PDRT WBL. And if you're not sure which transducer you have, where your connections go on the back of your graft, there's a little silver tag on there that'll tell you what transducer you have on there. So once you get the right transducer picked out, you just save and hit that. Now, one of the other things I'll do is I'll set up my edit overlay data, which is like my depth, which it's not showing right now because I'm in the shop, but it's got my water temperature. Uh, over here in the top left, I've got my speed. And then down here on the bottom, I've got my uh, time right down here. Now, to get to that, just pull the screen down, and it'll have your uh, edit overlay. And now over here, you can add it, you can change it, and you configure it. What you configure is, is basically the size that you want. When you pick the size you want, you go back. If you want to move it, uh, you just, you'll just hit add. I mean, if you want to add a certain thing to it, you can add your time, your date, and uh, change. If you want to do, you know, basically you want your speed over ground. Close that out. Now, if you wanted to move it, you just hit it, and then you can take and pull it down wherever you want. You can put it wherever you want on your graph. If you wanted to take your time and put it someplace different. Then when you get done with everything, just hit save. And... Uh, then I'll go back to, see now whichever screen I touch, kind of like the HDS Gen 1s and Gen 2s, if I touch the sonar screen, all my, uh, clear the cursor there, but all my buttons on the side here, this will all be related to the sonar. If I hit the chart page, then this will be my chart options over here. You know, it's just like the HDS uh, Gen 1, Gen 2, 8, and the 10. 
it does the same thing as your soft keys down on the bottom, but instead you've got them over here on the right. But as far as my sonar, I usually leave it on, you know, it'll come set up with your color line at 76%. Uh, my sensitivity I leave on auto, but even on auto, you do have a little bit of adjustment. If I get to a spot where I'm picking up a lot of clutter on my graph, you know, you can go up or down with your sensitivity here. I usually start out about, you know, minus three or four percent. And like I say, if I'm getting clutter, I'll decrease it. And if it's real clear, I'll increase it till I just barely get a little bit of clutter. So you can always adjust that, you know, on either graph. Uh, another thing I'll do a lot, if I'm running down the lake and I decide to fish, I usually don't like both graphs on at the same time. So what I'll do, I'll either hit the stop sonar button right there, and that'll keep the GPS running, but it'll, it'll stop the sonar. Now, if I want to uh, stop both the GPS, my fingers are, uh, the graph's not picking up my fingers real good. But anyways, if I want to stop both the GPS and sonar, just hit the power button once, and hit standby and the unit will go to sleep. Now when I get ready to get back down here to go to a different location, I'll just hit the power button, close it out, and it's back to the way it was. But usually when you're up there fishing, I want the sonar shut off on this one here. Now another thing I like to do is I'll go back into settings and I'll go to sonar and over here where it says fish mode, You've got several different modes to pick from. For table rock, I usually set mine up on fresh water. If I was fishing, you know, now shallow water is usually good for 60 foot or less. Now table rock, we have a lot of 80 to 100 foot water that we may be setting in the fish. So the fresh water application works best. But if I was in a place like Lake of the Ozarks or Grand, Truman, I'd set it at shallow water and that seems to work best for 60 foot or less. Okay, now another thing, okay, we've already done our transducer, so we've got that set up. And one more thing on the sonar, let's go back to settings, go to sonar, is network sonar. Now, I've got three units on the boat, most everybody has at least two. A lot of times, you know, I usually don't like to network my sonar. I want all my GPS to network itself, but by networking the sonar, sometimes you'll be reading off of a different transducer. So what I do to eliminate that is I, uh, where it says network sonar, I keep it off. Now, yeah, let me go back to that. Okay, sonar. Okay, now you would hit that right there. Now my sonar, uh, it's capable to network. So if I was deep fishing and I wanted the people in the back of the boat to see what I'm looking at, I would network my sonar and then I would go into network to data source and I would go to sonar and I would come down to uh, depth and I would pick out which unit I wanted to read off of. Right now, it's set up for this 12. But if I wanted it to read off of that 9 up there, I could make it read off of that 9 so the people back here are seeing the same thing that I'm looking at. But for the most part, just to keep it simple, I just keep the network sonar off. That way, I know this graph is reading the transducer that's in the back. The graph on the front is reading off of the transducer that's on the trolling motor. So that kind of simplifies it for me. Now, on the, now if I hit the chart, then my buttons over here will be for the chart. And I'll come to chart options. Now one thing I always do is on the chart orientation, you got three different, you got heading up, well, you got north up, heading up, or course up. North up, the map is always turning as you turn. And that kind of confuses me. You know, I like to have course up 
excuse me. So that when I'm running down the lake, like it would show me right in the middle of this channel. The reason it's not showing us right now is because I'm inside the shop and I'm not getting a, a GPS signal through the metal roof of my shop. But anyways, if I was running down the lake, what's on my right hand, what it's showing me is on my right hand side is actually there. If I had it on north of, the map would be turned to the orientation of north. So for me, it's just simple to keep it course up. Another thing I set is down here at the settings, and it's called safety depth. And what that is, it's the coloration on the char here. See, right now I've got it on six foot. So basically, everything in the white, you know, there's going to be a, a six foot depth change. Everything in the blue is going to be six or less. So if you run in a lake that you're not familiar with, like, like a shallow lake, I'll usually set it at six. And I'll run down the lake, and as long as I'm keeping myself in the white, I feel that I'm not going to run aground. But one of the main things I use this for is to see how a point lays out, like when I'm structure fishing. You'll see I'll go up to 30 foot. Now it's got a different shade of blue. Now that's going to be, at the outside edge of this blue mark, that is going to be, you know, 30 foot. So if I'm following a point, with the shading, I can see the different depths and how the point lays and how it runs out. It's easier to keep the boat in that contour line. Now with the new software that the touches, touch screens have plus, plus the HDS units, if you've got the updated software, one Navionics chip will run all the units. It used to be you had to have a chip for each unit. Now if you've got the updated software, you can just use one Navionics chip for each unit. Now, a way to tell uh, what software you have, you go to settings, and right down here it says about. Just hit that, and right here it's going to tell me what software I have. I've got the 45.144, but if you've got uh, the outdated software, I think, I'm not for sure, I think it might be a 2.0 something. What you got to do is do a software upgrade. And a lot of times you can take your units into uh, like Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's. Uh, here in Springfield, we've got Marine Repair Service. They've usually got a chip that they can update your unit. Or you can go to Lowrance and it's got a deal on there where it'll show you how to... Uh, download onto an MC card the latest software upgrades. So you can put it on the card and put the card in the unit. Uh, the one good thing about Lowrance too is their techs are really sharp. So if you've got questions on anything, usually you can call them. And I find that when I do that, if I'm setting in the boat, if I've got something I can't figure out, I'll call them, get them on the line while I'm sitting in the boat, and they'll walk me through it. They're really good. Uh, it, it seems like the more you do this stuff, the easier it gets for you. Now, another thing I've got, I've got a, hooked up to my engine, I've got what you call a Gateway 2000, which is real similar, similar to a smart craft. And on this particular page I've got up on my dash, I've got my water pressure, it's got my engine temperature, my alternator and my battery. And those are a couple of the most important things to me is not so much the water pressure but the water temperature. Uh, especially if you're fishing lakes that have a lot of grass in it, it can plug up the intake, the water intake on the engine and you can overheat the engine. Also in the morning I make sure you know I get up to about 120 degrees before I put the boat up on plane. Down here it tells me how many hours are on my engine. And you can set the dash configuration up to whatever you want. You can also hook it up to your gas tanks, tell you how much gas you've got, uh, how much gas you burned today. It's it's really unlimited to what you can do, uh, the different things you can set up on it. But I think I've showed you a little bit as far as, you know, the basic setups to get you out there on the water and get to fishing. Uh, if there's anything else I can help you with, don't be afraid to email or like I say, just call Lawrence. They can walk you through it. So till next week, uh, good luck. Good fishing.